over at 85. I'm in Wegmans. Did I forget and post the same video as Spring Trip? Or is this another one? Actually, Sean and I are heading up to the cabin. Uh, Sean didn't have the Wegmans last time, so we decided to stop in here. Get another uh, hoagie sub. So he's over there ordering it now. I'm going to look around, find out some, some good beer here, and uh, go ahead and get that. And uh, we're going to be up the cabin for a couple days. We're here to meet a timber rep for uh, to talk about what we can do for uh, cutting some of that timber down on the property. So stay with us for a couple days. It's going to be a good time. Uh, it's a good food coming up again, along with these subs here and uh, some good steaks tomorrow, etc. Uh, so uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good time. Come on along and uh, kick back. Get that uh, get that beverage of your choice right now and uh, enjoy. Map of uh, Pennsylvania Brewers. It's like about 20 of them on there, and I probably had beer from 15 of them at least. And right in this section right here, this is the PA section. You can you recognize a lot of that. It's about Yingling. When I was a kid, Yingling was was not a good beer. You know, I think over the years they've definitely improved it. Yeah, black and tan is one of my favorites for sure. But I think uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna check out some of the new trail. This is uh, Williamsport. Hey, there's Sean over there ordering up his subs. Definitely a spot you gotta you gotta check into if you're you're here. Maybe I'll even spell Wegmans right this time. So let me just hop back in the Jeep. You can see the mountains behind us. A little bit of thunderstorms this afternoon, but we'll head up there and uh, get it all settled in and have an enjoyable evening. Did get a confirmation call from the from John, and uh, we're going to meet him at nine o'clock down our gate tomorrow morning. So I look forward to that. In the Jeep with us, uh, if, if he turned around and look at us, uh, yeah, we got Sean's dog with us, Denali, and uh, he's going to be up with us for the next couple days also. So we'll get to enjoy his shenanigans. Oh yeah. So, uh, all right, we'll back on to fifteen and up to the cabin. packed got everything set uh it's getting on 4 15 4 30 so we're going to get right into to eating some dinner normally i do like to to kind of switch it up for everybody see something different but we did go back with those subs they worked so good last time i wanted to have sean give it a try i know he's a italian sub or a danny's favorite fanatic so wanted to give him a chance to test it out which we're going to do we're up here rain on and off for tonight i think tomorrow uh supposed to be uh, maybe showers later in the day, but we're going to go ahead and meet our guy at 9 at the gate. And uh, we'll come up and we'll walk the land a little bit and we'll we'll try to come up with some type of plan. Contract written tomorrow. That's not what we're up here for. This is exploratory. Right now, subs and uh, we'll see what else we're going to do. If you haven't tried this, I definitely recommend it. You know, if you like your bread uh, soft, yeah, definitely have it the way you want it. But uh, it's a good way to, to change things up a little bit. So... We'll come back in a few minutes, see how they are. As you can hear, yeah, rain on our roof. Absolutely. But uh, when we stopped in uh, the Wegman there, I got, got some, picked up some New Trail, SOB Hill, which is an Indian Pale Ale, and a Trellis from New Trail also. That's a uh, hazy double IPA. These subs should be just about wrapping up here. Let's take a quick peek. Oh yeah, they're just about there. Turn them over one more time and they're getting hot. And uh, I think they'll be ready for us. I can see the 
Looks like the salami on there is getting a little charred, which is little, good. A little, little curl. Yep, a little curl on them. Doesn't know whether to play or come back in and watch TV with us. You want to watch TV? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna catch a movie. Uh, like I said before, meeting the guy at nine, so we'll get up and have a good breakfast first, and then uh, see what he has to say. And I'll, uh, we'll catch everybody in the morning. Well, somebody's up and ready. We're up and ready for a new day. Yeah. Oh boy. Sean's ready. He's had his coffee. Yeah. Jack. Uh, Sean's having a little coffee. Get a little coffee over there myself. Off the last of the. Uh, the kicking horse kick-ass coffee that we had spring trip just had a little bit of it left doing one pour over and uh over here this looks like french toast but is it going to be french toast or something else yeah we just have to see in a couple minutes uh we'll, we'll see what it ends up turning into rain rain just about all night long it's going to be wet in the woods today but, uh, it was good night's sleep with that uh with that rain coming down and we have a sound machine over here, crashing waves, drowned out my snoring, and that uh, uh, that thing got drowned it out by the rain on the roof a few times. It was it was coming down, but uh, we should be fine in the woods. We just get a little wet walking through. Well, here's our French toast, looking pretty good. On top of that, there's a layer of ham, layer of turkey, one each. Black Forest Ham and Smoked Tavern Turkey is what I'm using. Both pretty good. Got them from the local store. Top of that, a layer of cheese. And that last bit, that's raspberry jelly on there. So we'll, we'll cover these up with that cheese melt a little bit. And uh, there's our breakfast this morning. You can either call Monte Cristo or Monte Carlo sandwiches. And that's, that's good breakfast right there. And we'll see what they look like plated up in a minute. Waiting at the gate right now. Sean and I drove down to meet the gentleman here. And uh, he's going to come up, take a look at our property. Uh, we're going to talk to him about what we want to do up there. I know I got a lot of comments uh, on that, or should we should we timber video? I appreciate those comments. Uh, we're kind of looking at it like we've got nothing to lose by doing some things up here. You know, you know our story up here. We've got only a couple deer out of here out of the last times that you've been watching the video, and before that, it was not that good either. So we really don't have anything to lose. Two deer out of, you know, a pretty long time. So if it improved it, great. If it made it worse. How could it get much worse than it is? So when you want to get a couple deer, oh, but we like the camaraderie, we like the fun that we have, and we like the memories that we have with each other, and that's why we keep coming back to the same spot all the time. We have a great time, and we're sharing it with you, and we just want that to continue. And if the property gets timbered, or partially timbered, or select cut, or a little mix of this, a little mix of that, uh, I think that's only gonna gonna help things in the long run. Get some light down to the forest floor. Get some of this growth coming back up again. Leave some some acorns in there so they can repopulate themselves and start growing back again. And we don't get all beech and maple growing up instead. Uh, when I, we talked to him before, uh, he kind of knew what we wanted to do. That we were looking to improve our property hunting wise. So I think he knows that, and hopefully he's going to keep that in mind when we're looking around. We'll, again, we'll talk to him about it. So hopefully he'll be here in a few minutes, and uh, probably not going to get him on a video just because of respect his rights of privacy, things like that. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll meet with him, and uh, we'll let you know the uh, prognosis. Hopefully it won't be prognosis negative. You know where that's from? Let me know. Well, here we are out on the deck in the afternoon. Uh, we did meet with a gentleman this morning at the 9, was right on time at the gate. Brought him up, we walked down one of our trails, checked out some of the work there. They are doing some stuff with the lots next to us, and uh, that'll be tomorrow's adventure. We'll go over and see what they're doing, maybe fly the drone around there and uh, see how things are. Uh, walked through there, kind of just, he just took an inventory of the trees. He was very good on uh, what was a 
what was a red oak? What was a white oak? What was a chestnut oak? What was an aspen? What was a hard maple? What was a soft maple? Uh, beech, birch, everything. Three lots here. We're looking to do a little bit more on the one, a little bit less over here, a little bit less on the other. That he did notice from the logging they did 30, 35 years ago it was probably it's probably in the 35 range at this point. Uh, looks like they did take a lot of the good oaks out down the bottom. There's a lot of big aspen trees down there. That's what a lot of them, uh, a lot of them, kind of made the majority of them. They were the ones that you could see they were. You know, we, I thought they were a big giant oak and it was ended up being aspen. I guess I can't tell my trees apart. Also want to do a little clearing out right behind the, the deck over here so we have a little bit of a view. So then we kind of came up and around the side over here and I had a nice conversation with him. A couple things that we have to do here yet. Some marks and property out. And then he's going to come back, completely survey uh, the, the area measure trees, inventory of trees, how many white oaks, how many red oaks, how many aspens, how many aspens over a certain size, things like that. And then he'll come back and he'll let us know uh, what they can do. So there's no nothing in the works as far as uh, like specific deadlines or we're definitely going to do this or not going to do this. Still have a lot of flexibility yet. It was good to meet with him kind of pick his brain a little bit about uh, what we think we should do. In future video, probably you see me coming back, we'll be marking out some of the lots. And then uh, once that's done, we'll call him and he'll come back and do that specific inventory and then kind of present uh, his presentation to us about you know what they can do, what they can take out. Uh, of course, how much change is gonna put in our pocket, et cetera, too. And uh, no commitment, so it's not like we've signed anything. Okay, stay tuned. And uh, we'll see what's up. And I know what's going to be up soon is going to be a pretty good looking dinner. We've got steaks, potatoes, and salads. The classic, what I call it, the senior dinner. Uh, he loved coming up here, having a potato, really just having steak and a salad. I'm adding the potato. Going to kick it up a couple notches on everything. But, uh, but this is more kind of a little dedication to senior. You know, I know this is what he liked when he come up here. Hey, give me a steak, give me a salad. Give me a give me a iced tea, and he was very very happy about it. So uh, we'll be having that tonight, kind of kind of senior dinner. It'll be interesting to get over to that other property tomorrow and fly the drone around a little bit and put our boots on the ground and and yeah. see what they did and see yeah. what the air see what it looks like. Is it a mess? Is it well done, etc. All right, what we're gonna do, like I said, uh, for the dinner, we're gonna do this kind of this ode to the senior, uh, but we're gonna kick up the potatoes a little bit gonna make potato bombs some people call them potato bombs I kind of call them uh, potato do or dog bones because uh, once we're done it's gonna kind of look like a the cartoon dog bone you see over here uh, from way back in the day so let's see how our apple core does hopefully it'll stay together and go right through that potato I think I'm gonna have to come in on the other side Hopefully they'll meet up. Yeah, there we go. And there we go. Look at this. Open it up. Here's our core. Here's our other end, which basically I'm just going to stick sort of right back in there. And then the inside, sharp cheddar, chopped bacon's get loaded in. Let's get this in there. Just got to shove them in. That's why I got the glove on. Everything else that lands on the table, I get to eat. And then once we're done and we cut these open, we'll add a little bit more of the cheese, a little bit more of the bacon uh, on some. But it's just going to add a, impart a little bit of extra flavor in there. And we'll take our other core. And hey, there's your either potato bone or dog bone. Like I said, I, I think it reminds me of a dog bone. And with Denali here, yeah we'll do that but well, we do have some uh, olive oil here infused with garlic we're gonna go ahead and put on there we'll drizzle him a little bit on there and a little bit of this Himalayan sea salt and go ahead and wrap him up 
and we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other one. I won't bore you with that one. We're out here on the deck. We got the card table out, but we're playing Blitzkrieg again. Now you might want to check that game out if you're just uh, interested in a pretty easy, you know, nice, smooth, and and fun game that you just have a you know have the conversation and have a little fun with and takes anywhere 20 minutes to a half hour game so you're not locked in for two or three hours and the complexity isn't isn't too bad so we're we're blitzkrieg in here and i'll pan around oh there's an ollie checking out a bug or something with gypsy moths are going crazy brought the grill out here on the back you know, so we can keep an eye on it and it's nice we do like the like the grill out here more than out front protection wise uh, it's it's better out there but since it's so nice and it's gonna be nice for a couple days and we might get a shower here or there, but we're going to do the grill out here. I'm just waiting. I should have done this before I did the bones, but we're waiting for it to come up, and then we'll we'll put the dog bones on, and I probably can do that right now. What the heck? Just keep an eye on the temp. Looks hot. And we'll come back and take a look at them. I'll keep an eye on them. We'll be right, sitting right next to them here, there, and I'm over here. Well, here we are getting the steaks ready today. Two wonderful looking porterhouses. You wondering what this is? This is rosemary from uh, the beautiful Mrs. Rook's garden. And we, I had froze these and that we took the fry, I cut it, we put it on there and froze them. So the, the flavor and parts of the rosemary is going to impart into that T-bone. We're going to kick it up a little bit, of course. Got to. Again, with the... Uh, garlic infused olive oil a little bit of that on there and the spices going with uh kinders and this is the steak blend haven't had it before taking a chance always take a chance when you haven't had something before but uh, kinders i'm pretty comfortable with so we'll go with a little bit of garlic olive oil Smells pretty darn good, I'll tell you that. Do my other one here. Another one looks just about exactly the same. I'll go ahead and check my potatoes and then come in and uh, get these and see how they're doing. Right. A little bit more oil. Sean's got the salads all made up. Uh, have some chives here. These are from uh, Mrs. Rook's garden also. So again, thank you to Mrs. Rook. Ooh, that Looks like really our good. steaks are doing quite well. Our potatoes are out of the tin foil. Just getting the skin on the potato a little crispy as the steaks are cooking. Probably on here a good eight, eight nine minutes. about it like I said we got more bacon more cheese butter when we open up the potatoes and uh, our salad our nice uh, table out here beautiful beautiful weather so, uh, we're gonna go ahead and sit down and enjoy right now oh my goodness that looks amazing There's that inside in there. Oh, As you yeah. You can see the bacon and melted cheese. And then we're going to put some more on it. Come out. There we go. 
little bit of that. I'll pass it over to Sean. A little bit of bacon. Oh yeah. <laughs> a little bit more for that. And uh, Ooh, a little extra butter. A little extra butter. It should melt fast on there. Mm-hmm. Chives. So there it is. Hey, uh, senior, I know you would have loved this. Uh, would have been a little fancy. You wouldn't have wanted, though. I know you would have dug in and really enjoyed it. So this one's for you, buddy. Uh, Sean and I really enjoyed that dinner. That was uh, that was pretty special. Uh, Great, great flavors, and the steak turned out really good. Uh, grill is working out perfect so far. Potatoes, spot on. Salad was very good. So we're going to go with the uh, little, little light up a cigar after dinner here. Sweet Jane from Deadwood again, another one that you've seen me have. But uh, if I have it, you see me coming back to it, you know I'm going to like it. So that's a good thing. Not a huge cigar, don't it shouldn't take too long to light up. Oh yeah. So we're still here now. We're back to uh, Blitzkrieg again. Uh, so Sean and I can continue, then get on to some movies and things like that. Go back, uh, you know, once it starts getting dark, go inside, watch a movie. Probably just one tonight. We'll probably stay out here a while. And uh, we'll catch everybody in the morning. here on the deck about 65 degrees beautiful uh, time for a little breakfast it's time for some uh, sausage gravy and biscuits this morning I'm getting the biscuits cooked up in the on the grill right now we're gonna do everything outside here probably eat sit out here and eat that's, uh, that's the thing to do I think so uh, nice like I said nice morning and uh, let me see what's cooking here I'm popping up a little bit Oh uh, yeah, they're getting there. Then I got the sausage gravy in there. I'm gonna put some sausage crumbles in. Already three quarters heated them up. Oh, look at that thickening them up. Sound like a four wheel that just went past. Some neighbors are up. Been hearing a little bit of that. For Last day or so. Oh, yeah, that's thick now, boy. Yeah. Got that quick. Let that sausage heat up for a sec. Let's check our rolls here. Or our biscuits, I guess I should say, not rolls. And I think they're just about ready. Let's see what we got here on the bottom. Oh, oh yeah. That looks good. I'd say that's nice golden brown on the bottom. Mm hmm. Just gonna go ahead and turn the heat off. That's it. Let this bubble for a second here. I think we're about done. I think so. Well, there's breakfast this morning. I think I needed something a little, little piece of something green over here just to make it look good. But yeah, we're ready. I'm gonna sit down and eat sausage, gravy, and biscuits. That was that was really good for especially for just it was a mixed pack. It wasn't anything special. And Sean's over there getting the drone ready. We're gonna take a walk over to the area that's uh, already been starting to get logged and uh, just do some flying around over there. And speaking of flying around, how do you like that segue? 
Gypsy moss. Don't you hate them? Whew. All over the place. This, this has been pretty bad uh, since we've been up here. Gypsy moths have just been all over. And the leaves are coming down. And Sean thought it was raining at one point yesterday. And it was, it was the leaves coming down from the gypsy moth uh, caterpillars eating the things. Like this. This is what Sean heard. It sounded like raining. Just pieces of leaves coming down. And I mean, if you just look at the top of the generator, you can see how much is all over the place. And there they are, hanging off the outhouse. I think you can see them all up there. I said all over the place. Whoops! Another one. It's one of those years, but uh, they'll recover. As the trees will recover, they'll be okay. But uh, I don't know if I ever will. You know, time for a little espresso. Today, we're, we have the uh, Lavazza uh, Espresso Italiano, actually made in Italy. Uh, that's one of my favorites as far as espresso roasts go. Uh, I have that at home just in my drip maker. And uh, I, I have Kurg, and they have the, the cups for those, too, and I have them. So, uh, again, definitely one of my favorites. If you get a chance, give it a try. Yeah, we even have some espresso cups over here today. These are some Walmart's finest. Only the best for $0.96. Cents. And Sean has the AeroPress up, and that's going to make some good coffee. Again, if you're interested in the AeroPress, uh, it looks like it's great for taking along if you're camping. Uh, coming up, I just want a cup of coffee real quick. You can make the uh, the espresso, or you can make the, the Americano, which is basically espresso with the add hot water to. That came about in World War II when the Americans were moving through Italy. They'd stop at the, the shops and the, they'd have espresso, and Americans weren't used to drinking it, so they'd add water. So that's where the, the Americano came from. Uh, but we're just going to have some espresso and, uh, and enjoy a little bit more time on the deck before we take a walk over to the other property. If you're interested in things like the AeroPress or some of the other items you're going to see, all that stuff's in the uh, the links below if you're interested, you want to take a look at it. Uh, some, of the, some of these items are pretty nice that we use on a regular basis, my camera equipment and things like that in there. So again, the description below if you want to check any of that kind of stuff out. I think that's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. Stir. Stir, 10 seconds. And that is one tight seal on there. Mm -hmm. And they say when you're making espresso, it's supposed to be like 10 pounds of pressure is, is true espresso, something like that going through. And uh, from what it looks like, I know he's exerting at least 10 pounds of pressure on there, if not more. Some strong. Yeah, it's going to be some strong stuff here. <laughs> All right. But that is good. All right. What was yours? Are you brewing or rise and grind? Rise and grind, I believe. Okay. Uh, let's have some. Road down to where they're logging down here. They widen this out a bit. This is still our lot here on the left side for a little while. Until we get down here to about the marks of uh, the flags on the tree then I'll start into the other one. And Ollie's leading the way. Yep. Here we are coming down to the landing that this other company created. Pretty good size log pile right there. Yep. Giant timber pile. If I had to take a guess they're just taking oaks out of here right now. I can certainly smell the, the tannin from the oak. And about five or six machines down here. I think it was too wet for the last few days, and that's why they did not continuing on. 
But uh, that's quite a pile over there. down the path there and this is a trail that sometimes we run our four-wheeler in it hooks around loops around and goes back onto our property uh, you've seen us turkey hunting on this spot before this big oak right there probably gonna go hopefully they'll leave these nice pines in here there's there's, a, there's a, some right on this ridge and there's some pines on this ridge right here and hopefully they'll leave them We've heard turkeys down in here all kinds of times. They love these uh, roosting up on these nice horizontal pine branches like that. I just wanted to take a minute. I know I've been doing a Memorial Day video the last couple of years. Uh, I knew I wasn't going to be able to get up here and do one this year. just wanted to take a minute to thank all our Armed Forces members who, who died with their uniform on, which Memorial Day is. I do know that. I know a couple of people said you're kind of mixing things up, but just because I wanted to kind of squeeze every, all the tributes kind of into one Memorial Day, Veterans Day for our citizen soldiers that put the uniform away and are now living the civilian life. And of course, Armed Forces Day for our current active members of the Armed Forces. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, National Guard, Coast Guard, Space Force, and all the different branches. Definitely giving you a, a big salute today for all the, the work that you do, all the effort that you put in to, to make me do things like this. Give me the freedom to say what I want to say. And uh, again, it's much, much felt gratitude. I'm in the, the General Grant hat or a facsimile of and uh, I know a lot of a lot of people Civil War and I know very controversial I'm, I'm sorry to see it's kind of getting to be the racist versus the less racist at this point and that's not the way it was and General Grant said I felt like anything rather than rejoicing at the downfall of a foe who had fought so long and valiantly and had suffered so much for a cause though that cause was I believe one of the worst for which a people ever fought and was one for which there was the least excuse. And that was General Grant whose statues were pulled down this past summer. So again, I, I salute you. Today is June 5th. Tomorrow is D-Day, June 6th. And for those 4,000 plus Americans that didn't make it off the beach, again, this, this day, the salute is for you for the freedoms that, that you provide us. Another item for outside here, just an old school thermometer. Not like we'd really use that to get an accurate temperature of anything, but more of a nice deer camp thermometer with the orange on there. Nice, looks like a 14 point buck on there. <laughs> we see those here all the time. A nice deer camp, hunter's retreat and gun club. Oh, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Established 1862. Oh yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Well, uh, I got the last screw in there. Here. Where is it? There we go. Straight 
right? Let's say it's it looks, basically looks, running along this. Yeah, thing, looks so. straight to my eye. That's our level. Let's see if that one goes in easier. Unless that screw is just dull, we're just reusing one. Senior had used a long time ago. There we go, it is Good. on. All right. In and on, and what's it saying? Right about 80. Oh, a, a nice little front uh, entrance now. Put up some signs, and this will probably be it. Maybe, maybe one on either side of the window if I, if they end up looking good enough. They have to pass the, oh, that looks pretty good and test. Well, here's our pit. Then Ollie's checking it out. Sniffing all the deer that have been hitting us. Here's some pictures that uh, I've taken over the past month or six weeks. And Sean's going to freshen this up with this half bucket. So we did a full bucket. We did about a half bucket. Now he's going to come back and do the other half bucket. And you can see they're really digging this thing up. Definitely hitting it hard. That stump there, you can see they're gnawing it down on the top. Uh, good job. That'll keep them coming back. And, and we have the Linksys over there and the, uh, the tree line from Tractor Supply that's out, I think, this week uh, for $76. It's going to come out if I heard the price point. So uh, I'm going to pull the card from this. Let's take a look at the videos that it shot. Well, there was a, a spider. It looks like they decided to make a little web on there. Uh, had to pull a pretty good web off of there. But uh, we have some coming through. They're not, they're not booners. I'm not seeing uh, defined brow tines and branches of antlers yet on them. I did see a couple nubs. Uh, well, I'm not sure what that logging is going to do over there. I would think with those saws are going, they're getting a little bit stirred up. Got it going again. Freshened it up. And that's just going to keep pulling them in all summer. I'm waiting for my pictures of the first fawns. Uh, it's like I said, it was it's June 5th right now, and haven't seen any yet. But I know it's going to be any day. So when they do, hopefully, uh, if it's before I get this finished up, I'll be able to put a couple fawn pictures in there too. We were talking about gypsy moss here. Stuff's all over from them. You can see one dangling right here in front of the camera. But uh, yeah, went, went for Pizza Hut today. Instead of Tony's, giving another one of the local businesses some uh, stuff. Nice three topping, $10, and a six pack of bush for $16. So we're set for tonight. You go ahead and eat out here. Mm, Pizza Hut, we're looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. Got mushroom pepperoni sausage, 10 bucks for a large. Not bad, we had to do it. Uh, I guess I owe Sean a couple dollars here. Yeah. 
get that to him. <laughs> After dinner, maybe he'll forget. Maybe, oh. yeah. This guy's going right for your plate. Oh, yeah. All right, well, dish her up and let's eat. Well, Deshaun and I enjoyed that pizza and uh, a nice a nice bush to go with it. A nice, basically bland, no uh, no over stomping the pizza beer. Uh, so, so we enjoyed it. We're going to sit out here in the deck, play, play some more Blitzkrieg like you saw yesterday. Have a cigar. I wanted to show you one. This one right here. I picked these up a couple months ago. These are the, that's the Pennsylvania 601 edition. Actually has Pennsylvania tobacco in it. I found them to be okay. Starts off a little strong, kind of mellows out about halfway through. It gets a little bit better towards the end of it. Uh, so if you see that, again, this looks like the, the license plate for Pennsylvania as far as the blue and yellow and white. Uh, but again, the PA 601 edition. G give one a try. I wouldn't buy a five pack or a box of them uh, until you try one, see if you like it. Well, what we are going to have, uh, I'll tell you what, take a look at this. This is me down in uh, Bridgeville, Delaware at the Big Humidor. And down here at the Big Humidor. I think you can see the sign behind me. Route 13, Bridgeville. If you're heading down this way, this is a cigar shop you've got to stop at. Uh, really nice one, one of the better ones in Delaware. Right on 13 and down the street here. You can see the Wawa, there's a light and a Royal Farms down there. That's 404 where you turn over to go towards Rehoboth Beach. So some of you uh, beach goers may be coming down this way. You see Bridgeville, you see the big hymn door, you may want to stop in today. Oh, they have a uh, gentleman in from uh, DBL cigars. I think they're Dominican cigars. And uh, he's going to roll some. And I wanted to go in and check them out. Connecticut, right? Yes. Okay. You don't have to buy that at all. We have to take that. You don't, you don't have to buy any. You, you support I don't mind. I don't mind. Well, they're only $100 if you buy them. So. <laughs> 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 you want to buy them. Uh, I'm not figuring out how you all get to make all those boxes that fast, rolling them like that. No, but because I have a cigar factory and I have like 40 employees that make, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can make all of them. But I have, done, I have done a lot of this. This is the bunch and the filler that you had to make before because you had to press in a mold and keep press for at least 24 hours. Then you get the shape, this is the filler inside and the binder cover the filler. The wrapper is the last leaf that you put in the cigar. So this is Connecticut wrapper. Mal. Inside has Dominican filler, Corojo 1999, and it has binder Sumatra from Ecuador. That's what the press was like. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That's what we're talking about. That's an old school mark. Old school. Yeah. Yeah, most of them is plastic now. But I prefer wood. Much better for me. You have that. Yeah. That is the young Ray Perfecto.
And who you saw down there, that was Francisco uh, Almonte, and he owns the company. He owns the tobacco operation of DBL Cigars, Dominican Big League Cigars. If you go to the website that you saw on there, and I'll have it below also in the, in the description, uh, you'll see him in there as uh, working out in the field, taking a look at things, you know, kind of publicity shots, but uh, you'll see him. And uh, here is one of those cigars that you saw him roll. This was actually the second one uh, that uh, kind of went through the music, and uh, I'm going to enjoy this one. And I got for Sean, this is a Amarillo from, again, from uh, DBL, Dominican Big League. Uh, it's got that nice barber pole to it with uh, the different tobaccos on the uh, the wrapper. And this one, Connecticut wrapper. And when you were watching that video there, you saw him dip the cigar. That was uh, Elijah Craig uh, bourbon that he was dipping that cigar in. And again, here's the, the Amarillo. It's a little bit box press style. And the... Uh, uh, again, barber pole, and Sean's going to enjoy that one. I did have one the afternoon after I came home from uh, the big humidor, and uh, it was, I thought it was actually excellent, excellent, because usually I'm a Nicaraguan guy, and I kind of stay in that line, but I, I found that to be very, very smooth, uh, great. I think I smoked it down to about like this this much, which I usually don't do most of the time. I'm, I got a pretty big uh, butt by the time I throw it away, but uh, this one... Uh, it was it was pretty t small, which usually means you're enjoying it. So we're going to sit down. We're going to have these. We're going to do a little Blitzkrieg out here on the deck this afternoon. Had a good day just kind of messing around today, uh, doing a few things here or there, as, as you saw. We'll kick back tonight, and then uh, we'll see what we'll do a little later, movie, something like that. But, uh, maybe we'll catch you in the morning. another trip up uh short but good had a lot of fun got to spend some time with sean just uh talking and playing games out there on the deck and just enjoying some things uh we'll keep you updated on the timber situation right now again still in planning stages nothing is set no contracts have been signed anything like that so um more to come more to come on the timber but again, a great time just to just to get up here. And the, the, I know the weather was hot back home in the 90s, kind of stayed in the mid to lower 80s here and then cooled off quick at night. So it was, it was pretty darn comfortable for us. You know, Denali enjoyed the trip too. Thanks for Denali to come along. Of course, Sean, Syntex 77, myself, White Rook 85. Well, I guess for now, take care and I'll catch you next time.